Christians must support Israel? Well, this presentation contains a number of questions directed to my Christian friends. What does Christianity have to do with the present-day nation of Israel? Are there any scriptures in the New Testament where Christ said anything about the Jews returning to that physical land or the rebuilding of their temple? I'm talking about the New Testament. Are there any verses in there that support this? Brainwashed by disinformation and propaganda. There is a culture whose leaders have developed an effective approach to the science of propaganda and disinformation, and you probably can take a class on it in a university. The Russian fellow just wrote a book about how his country has used disinformation. Here is his name and the name of his book. Disinformation by Lieutenant General Ion Mihaya Pesepa. It is available online and it just crossed my mind that Zionistic dispensationalism is actually based purely on disinformation. Now disinformation is used to control the masses. Have you ever heard of this man, Samuel Yuttermeyer? He was a very wealthy and prominent Jewish New York City attorney who contributed to the support of President Wilson in the 1912 election. He also took part in preparing the Federal Reserve Bank Law, and it is a private bank. After returning from a world conference of Jews at The Hague in 1912, Thirty-three, he made an appeal on WBAC radio calling for war against Germany in August 7th of 1933. He called for a holy war and described the Jews as the aristocrats of the world and they soon declared war on Germany. And now Germany had been under their control. They weren't the rulers, but their finances really was in control. They bought their way into that country and they own a lot of it. Very small percentage of Jews, big percentage of holdings. Now Cyrus Schofield was supported by Uttermeyer. Uttermeyer invited him into a highbrow writers club and later the Schofield Bible ended up being owned by a Zionist book publishing company. The new Schofield Bible was published by them and had nothing to do with Schofield, for he had passed away many years before, and it is supportive of Israel. Now, dispensationalism is filled with disinformation and makes Christ out to be a false prophet, and yet it has been the basis for a very lucrative publishing industry that depends on newly created prophetical myths as a way of selling more lying prophetical books. Now, <clears throat> facts based, fact based books on Cyrus Schofield's hidden personal life are scarce, such as court records concerning his marriages and law breaking activities. He has really some cloth, what he calls skeletons in his closet. Now for some questions for both Bible readers and other people. I repeat this again later, but it is true. Very few Christians ever read the Bible. The questions I ask do have answers. In fact, they may even contain some kind of an answer in the question. But are those answers true? I am of the opinion we need to try and get answers to them. Schofield. You need to find out who he was. Now, not one stone was to be left upon another in that Jewish temple, but when was that to happen? Did the Romans destroy it in 70 AD? Who did Jesus tell to watch for the abomination of desolation that Daniel wrote about? That had been sealed. 
God told Daniel to seal it, but Christ mentions it and tells them to look for it. Again, who was Christ talking to in Matthew chapter 24? Did those things happen, and are they tied together? Has that Jewish temple ever been rebuilt? And was Christ talking to the people around him about things they would see happen within their lifetime? Pretty obvious, that's true, but disinformation has washed that out of your head. And was John the Baptist and Christ's apostles wrong? Are the rabbis of Judaism proud of their heritage as Pharisees? Did Christ tell the Pharisees they were not obeying Moses, and that was why they did not believe what he said? Did he directly pronounce several woes on the Pharisees of that generation and mapture in Matthew chapter 23. Now, is the meaning of the word generation in the Greek different in Matthew chapter 23 than in Matthew 24? There's been a lot of people propose and demand and that that is a fact. There is a difference the way Matthew 23 uses generation and that the way it's used in chapter 24, but they do not have anything that makes sense to support that with. Now, who was to keep watching because no one knew the day nor the hour of his return? Who was to keep watching? Now, do you believe that also means Christ did not even know the generation or the age when he would return? Are there any verses in the Old or New Testament that teach that this physical world will never be destroyed? There are several of them. Now, did this world cease to exist because of the flood in Genesis? And was Apostle Peter telling the people this physical world would be destroyed like that one had been? And have you or re your religious leaders ever checked a concordance to see how the Greek word for element is used in other passages. Now, the end of the world in the New Testament was supposed to be like what happened to the people and the world in the flood. And people keep talking about the complete end, the burning up of the heavens and earth, the whole universe is going to be destroyed. Did, ha did that happen in the flood? Read that passage. Now, who are we to rely on to interpret Scripture? Did Peter want to build three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Christ? Well, did God at that same time tell them to listen to his beloved Son? Now, was Christ of the tribe of Judah? Was the Messiah and salvation to come out of that tribe, or was it to come through Pharisaical Jews? Now, is that a trick question? Is the word Jew now almost exclusively associated with Pharisaical Judaism, which follows their oral traditions, or the Talmud, far more than they do the books of Moses? Also, should Christians know about this? Has any of this ever been brought to your attention in church? Why haven't we been taught about some of this? Now, again, can we see Christ in the now if we have not been born again? Back to Nicodemus. Now, did Christ tell his disciples in St. John chapter 14 that the world would not see him anymore. Did you get that? He actually says that in St. John chapter 14. The world would not see him anymore, but that if they loved and obeyed both him and his father, they would then be able to see him clearly, and that he and his father would come and take up their residence in and with them. And he tied that all in with them being 
filled with another comforter. Another comforter was come, so which means there was two of them. Did, did that happen to them on the day of Pentecost? Can you receive just one part of the Godhead without receiving the other two? Is God one God? Is the Comforter the Holy Ghost? Is that the Spirit of God? And did Christ said that they already knew that Comforter back then when he was talking about this all in St. John 14? We really need to study that chapter. Now was Apostle Paul trying to get some pagans to see Christ? And they took him, Paul, and brought him into Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speak is? This is on Mars Hill, and it's talked about in Acts 17, 19. He said to them that they, or all men, should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. That's Acts 17, 27, 28. He said that any person couldn't possibly find God if they just feel after him. Now, was Mary's son, Jesus, to sit on the throne of David? Did Peter say that Christ had poured out on them what they were seeing? And did he also say Christ had sat down on both David's throne and on the right hand of God in Acts chapter 2? Were there any devout God loving Moses obeying Jews' presence from every nation under the heavens when that happened? Does that at all imply that every Jewish tribe heard about Christ? Again, were those happenings in fulfillment of what Christ said in St. John 14? Don't get all confused with them telling you all about the 12 tribes went there and there's a lost tribe and 13 tribe and all that stuff. Keep in mind those people receive the Holy Spirit and see if you can tie that in with what he said in St. John 14. Were they receiving that born again experience on the day of Pentecost? Again, back to Nicodemus. Now did Christ say his followers were not of this world, just as he was not of this world in St. John 15, 19, 17, 14, and in 17, verse 16? And did he pray that they not be taken out of this world, but kept in St. John 17, 15? Let me ask that again. In, in that 17th chapter, did he actually ask God that he not take his people out of the world, but keep them? Did that mean that the rapture of the saints would not remove them from this world, but would instead protect them and lift them up, just as Christ had been lifted up before the world when his words came to pass in 70 A.D.? Now in 70 A.D., there was a lull in the fightings, and many Christians who accepted what Christ said, heeded his warning, got out of there. Can you accept that as being part of what was Christ was praying for in St. John 17, 15? The Theodora, Theodore Herzl found the modern Zionist movement in 1897. Was he an atheist? Did he propose that anti-Semitism could and should be promoted and used to force Jews into going to Palestine? Now, was Ben-Gurion, who has considered the father of Israel, a communist? Now, people deny that, but he went to Russia. He really thought and he talked about how wonderful the government of Russia was. And he also said he wanted to put that in place in Israel. Now, is there a pro-Israel history about him on the web? 
If you'll hunt one of them up, they give you the story about Ben-Gurion, and they go into this. Now, did he and other Zionistic Jewish leaders ever say they were racial, racially superior to other people and were to rule the world from Israel? They're supposed to know about that. Now, did Germany financially support the creation of the nation of Israel prior to World War II? Now, beginning in 1932 and for several years after, was there a transfer agreement set up in Germany to help Jews liquidate their possess possessions so they could have that money transferred to a Palestinian bank? And were they also provided with passage there? Now, were there very many Jews appreciative of this who took advantage of that agreement? Now, did Hitler refuse to renew it? Or did he instead renew that agreement at least twice in the face of opposition? His opposition could see that it was hurting their economy. Those Jews had money and it was leaving with them. They didn't like that. Now, were the teachings of the Talmud ever declared contrary to basic morality in a court of law? There was a German newspaper in court the 30th of October 1932 charged with a hate crime against Jews. Was that newspaper cleared of all charges? Did that court, after the Talmud had been checked, rule that it promoted immorality and was a danger to society? I'm not quoting it, but that was the point. Now, has that historical event been almost completely expunged from history of the world? Can you find it? You'll be really doing some digging if you ever find uh, that story. Now, is this the name of that newspaper, Der Sturmer? There's stories out there about him and that newspaper, and all, and they all talk about how terribly anti-Semitic he was. He put political cartoons of, in the, of the Jews, and he put a lot of quotes out of the Talmud in his newspaper. But uh, see if you can find that account. And you're going to say those Germans were stupid for declaring that that was immoral? Now, was the war that the Jews declared on Germany in March of 1933 the result of the findings of that court? Did that German Der Sturmer newspaper use fictitious Talmudic quotes? Now, have you ever been told in church about some of the curious things that Talmud says about people who are not Jews? Do you think I just might have some more questions that I would like answers to on the subject, but do not want to ask them because an underage child might see this? However, do you believe every religion should be free to practice what they believe, even if their faith teaches them to kill people or enslave them? All those who do not accept theirs or in the least enslave them. I said I already said that. There's two major religions that believe that. Christianity doesn't believe that. They don't believe in killing people and enslaving them. And uh, they... Many of them were against slavery. Charles Finney is one of them. He's one of, he was given credit for having a, lot, a good positive effect against slavery in his lifetime. Now, can Christians pass out literature or Bibles freely on the streets in Israel? Now, have several Christian churches been vandalized by religious Jews and, even, and some even burned down in Israel? That's been in the news several times. Now, if a Jewish citizen complains about a Christian to Israel authorities saying they, because they say they had tried to convert me, could that Christian be charged with disserving the police? Well, that can happen almost anywhere, and it may be happening here not too far in the future. Are there any Christian Palestinian churches and Bible schools in Palestine? Have there been any non-combatant Palestinian Christians killed? by the Israeli military over the last 70 plus years. Well, does Israel have a constitution? It has laws to protect freedom of religion, but still yet, it is a Jewish nation. 
And when that's said, that's not the same as when we call ourselves a Christian nation. Now, can you accept this report? It was made in 2011. Now, what do Israel, China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Afghanistan have in common? All of them scored a big fat zero on the annual Freedom of Religion Index published by CIR, the, the Kendrelli Richards Human Rights Data Set. Now listen. Check with Norman Finkelstein and see what he thinks about what's happening between the Israelis and the Palestinians. He spoke, his folks all above his mother and father suffered and most of them were killed, if not all of them, in camps in Germany. And yet he is sick of how Israel is treating the Palestinians. Now, he's a Jew. Is it true that some Christian leaders in Israel say that when they report abuse, it is seldom even investigated, so they have just accepted it as something it is best to ignore. That's been said for numbers of them. I've seen a, a video where Christians went over there and investigated that, and they couldn't believe what they saw. Now, does the Muslims' Quran say Jews were originally God's people, but they sinned? Now, do Muslim teachings from the Quran admit that there are still some good Jews and some good Christians? Did their teachings say that both Mary and her son Jesus were righteous people? Does the Jewish Talmud say anywhere in it that Mary and her son Jesus were righteous people? You know, you could download that for free and do a search on it. See what it finds, what it says in there. Now, do you know of any Christian or of any Christian leader who has a copy of the Talmud? What about the Quran? Now you can get all of this, put it on your computer and do searches on it. Now, are there, while I'm on this subject right here on this slide, I want to ask you, have you been so brainwashed that you don't believe there's any Muslims that are good people? I had a woman standing in my front room telling me that she was raised in Iran, and all of her friends at school were Muslims, and she was a Christian. I can't deny that. I cannot believe that young woman was lying. Are you a Bible reader? Do you personally know of any Christian or of any Christian leader who has both a computer and a Bible pro program on it, and they use it a lot? Is it rather common knowledge that very few Christians read the Bible? I've said that earlier, and I have people I talk to, friends, that said, yeah, we need to read the Bible more. And they've admitted that very few Christians read it. Now, does this sound like something Jesus said? He said, you err, for you neither know the Scripture nor the power of God. Do you think it is safe to just follow a religious teacher without checking out what they teach with the Bible? Do you happen to remember those noble Bereans? They're mentioned in the book of Acts. I just wonder how many Christians I know could even follow this. Are there any religious Jews who are not for Israel, Judaism, or Zionism? Were Christians, were Christ's followers to follow the Judaistic Pharisees? Does it appear that his followers obeyed Moses and had the faith of Abraham and acted like him? Now, did Christ admit that those Jews were all of the seed of Abraham? But he added that even so, they were not all the children of Abraham. He said, you guys tried to kill me, but Abraham wouldn't have done that. Now, Apostle Paul says, what did Apostle Paul say that by accepting Christ, we too become children of Abraham? I wonder how often that's preached in church. 
Have you heard about the new yet old clash between Torah-observant Karaite Jews and the Rabbinites in Israel? For over 1,300 years, Karaites have battled with Rabbinites. Uh, they are the adherents to mainstream Judaism or Pharisees because they, the Karaites, reject the Talmud, which is the body of the oral tradition that Rabbinites claim God gave Moses along with the written Torah on Mount Sinai. Now, clinging to the biblical word alone, Karaites regard skull caps, phylacteries, little leather boxes containing Torah scrolls, matrilineal descent, in other words, of that lineage, a certain lineage, and non-biblical festivals, such as the Festival of Lice, as pagan accretions. The Rabbinites, like Muslims, or as they prefer to say, like Temple-era Jews, prostrate barefoot on carpets. A recent Karaite convert says, the Orthodox add and the Reformed take away. It is only we, we Karaites, who follow the Torah, and Christians are supposed to follow the Torah also. Apostle Paul said, we're saved by faith, and by grace, and so forth. He says, does that mean we do away with the law? He said, God forbid, we establish the law. Now, can the book Israel 101 be sent to you free? It's been passed out in churches everywhere for nothing. Of course, they take up offerings. Have you ever heard of Christians United for Israel? Makes me wonder who's back behind them. Now, if you, if you have, then ask yourself, has this presentation countered any of the, their hyper-glossed-over presentation found in that book. It is well done. Man, it's an expensive thing. Now, are there several divisions in Judaism? Is the nation of Israel based primarily on a secular form of Zionistic Judaism that they have used as a crutch to support their goals? Are there popular rabbis teaching in Israel who are more into Judaism but who still laud Zionism? Are there also some few Jews in Israel who are almost entirely into uh, older, pure Judaism and just endure giant Zionism because of what it has accomplished, but are against what has been done to the Palestinians? Now, are the Karaite Jews a very small minority there? Man, they've been slaughtered in the past. History bears that out. There's whole areas where they lived, communities, and other Jews went in and just slaughtered them. Now, I wonder if anybody will search that out. Now, do Christians united for Israel support war? Are they a front for the ideal of continual war being a means for continual peace? Do they ever think that war might be a racket? Ask yourself, why are Israel and the United States supporting Al-Qaeda? Now, does this next quote represent any of the ideas Christians United for Israel support? Orthodox Judaism maintains that the Talmud is the authoritative and true exposition of Scripture dictated by God himself. It also asserts that the New Testament is false and misleading while the Talmud is pure and holy. Is this true? And did any form of Judaism have anything to do with the founding of Israel? Now, I've been questioned. People don't believe that the United States and Israel are supporting Al-Qaeda. But there have been reports that Israel has people that have infiltrated various forms of terrorist, terrorist cells down through the years, and please don't try to tell me that if the United States is doing everything over there all on its own to protect this country and have no reason or no connection to any of the desires of Israel. Boy, people are really dreamers. They think that... Uh, that since we might be supporting Al-Qaeda, and Al-Qaeda's been killing us right now, there's a big alert on today about Al-Qaeda and the terrorists over there. 
worried about it. And yet they found in the Benghazi deal that the CIA was into sending out arms and ammunition to some of those rebels. People are afraid to use Google and don't care. They're more into playing games and reading cut and dried approaches to this stuff that favors Israel. They don't want to hear the truth. Have any of these questions exposed some of the contradictions in Israel 101 story? Have you been erroneously taught that Judaism follows the Torah, which is the teachings of Moses? Again, is it true that no one can see Christ, nor his kingdom, in the now, unless you have been born again? And can we remove that inability to see him by repenting and making a choice based on, fa on faith? If we do that, will he come and take him and his father and the spirit, and God is the spirit, will they come and take up the residence in us? And will we then be the temple of God? Now is Christ here ruling and reigning in the hearts of his people, and are we his temple? And did Apostle Paul see heavenly Zion coming down from heaven nearly 2,000 years ago? Or is that happening just now, after nearly 2,000 years? In the nation of unbelieving Israel? You believe that? God help us. I'm really worried about my people. Now this is the end of this presentation. Check my other videos if you have time, and you do have the time. But please, please read the Bible. God bless. This is your Vern Manson.